So Harry and Lloyd are back yet again with Dumb and Dumber 2, the sequel that no one was asking for. I mean, who are we kidding? Who was asking for this? Who? I have no idea. And yet, here we are. Someone convinced them to make a sequel, and they did. In any case, uh, for this time around, 20 years after the first movie, Lloyd has apparently been spending the last 20 years in a mental hospital in a catatonic state until one day he just looks up at Harry, who is coming to visit him again, as he does every week, and just shouts, Got ya! Last 20 years were apparently an elaborate joke. Because of course they were. Which Harry finds hilarious, and so they go home and they learn that Harry may have actually fathered a kid with Freda Felcher, who you may recall was mentioned in the first movie, but we never actually met her. This time we do, and so Harry is trying to track down his daughter, Penny, uh, and so he and Lloyd start heading to her adopted parents' house, and the parents tell them that they need a very important package delivered to Penny, which could potentially worth billions of dollars and could change the fate of the universe. And they have to deliver it to her at this uh, science conference that she's giving a speech at. And so they head down there, driving across country to deliver this package because Harry wants to be reunited with his daughter. And Lloyd apparently has the hots for Penny, which kind of weirds Harry out because, dude, we're about the same age. You're old enough to be her father. Ew. <laughs> and, of course, as they're doing this, they are being tailed by some very nasty people who want the package for themselves and will stop at nothing to get it. And that's Dumb and Dumber 2 in a nutshell right there. Uh, I was a bit nervous about this one, A, because, like I said, no one was asking for this, and I'm amazed they even convinced Jim Carrey to do it, since he's generally avoided doing sequels ever since Ace Ventura 2. But somehow they talked them into this one, and its Rotten Tomato score was not very good. It was 20-something, I want to say like 28. Some, it's very low. So maybe it was my lowered expectations. Maybe it's partly due to nostalgia. Whatever it was, I honestly kind of like this one. I still can't believe I'm saying this, but I... Honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I don't think it's a great movie. I don't even think it's as good as the original, quite frankly. The, the original, I think, still holds up pretty well. This one probably will not hold up as well, but still, I thought it was pretty funny. For the most part. Really, what makes this movie work are the performances. Especially from Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, who step back into these roles as if they never left. They they got these characters down even 20 years later, and they play off of each other so well. They have such good chemistry on screen. And the rest of the actors in this movie also do a pretty good job. Um, I actually really liked Rachel Melvin as Penny, uh, Perry's daughter, who is every bit as dumb as Harry and Lloyd, pretty much. And just, she actually has some very funny moments and plays off of Harry and Lloyd quite well, too. Um, and Kathleen Turner plays Freda Felcher in this. She was outstanding, I thought. Uh, Rob Riggle is in this because he's apparently in every comedy now. Uh, he's actually playing two different characters, uh, twin brothers, I guess. I, I thought it was kind of weird when he first showed up in the movie and he was wearing such an obvious wig. I'm thinking, why is that necessary? Then I find out he's playing two different characters, one with short hair, one with long hair. Oh, okay. Probably could have found a more convincing wig, though, but n nevertheless, <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't that bad. But yeah, the actors all did a fine job, I thought. Um, for the most part, the comedy works pretty well. It's not as funny as the first movie, and there are some bits... that Some bits work, some bits don't. Uh, there are a lot of callbacks to the first movie, which, for the most part, don't really feel forced. There's one or two that do, but... but Mostly, it actually works pretty well. One of the things that bothered me a little bit about this is the movie does feel very similar to the first one, and in some cases, maybe a little too similar. I mean, the basic plot of this one, you have Harry and Lloyd driving across country, trying to deliver 
an item to a girl that Lloyd happens to have the hots for while being tailed by criminals who want to kill them and take the package for themselves. If you've seen the first movie, this should sound familiar. Because it's pretty much the same fucking story. Is this really the only thing the Farrelly brothers could come up with for these two characters? I, although I, I can't really put all the blame on them because there were six people credited with writing this. Um, and considering that, I'm amazed this wasn't more of a mess than it was. Honestly, because usually when you see that many writing credits, that's, that's a bad sign, typically. But in this case, it's actually not that bad, but probably could have been better. And there, there are a few jokes that really don't work. There's this one thing I remember in particular. There's this weird running gag involving James Bond with uh, Jim Carrey's character Lloyd that I really don't know what the hell they were going for with that. It was not nearly as funny as the writers thought it was. What, whatever they were thinking, it just, it did not work at all. And there were also a few jokes in there that probably would have been funnier had I not already seen them done before in much better movies, or actually in not necessarily better, I'll get, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but, like, one of the jokes in this movie is Harry's parents, we actually meet them in this movie and find out they're Asian. And, of course, Harry is adopted, obviously, but has no idea he's adopted. The jerk much? You know, I can't have been the only one thinking that. You mean my skin's gonna stay this color? It's, it's pretty much the same joke, just... But Asian instead of black. And there was another joke. Oh my god, this... Uh, this shocked me. There is one that I swear they stole from Ready to Rumble. Which was that crappy movie that WCW was involved with back in the day, with David Arquette. If you haven't seen it, don't. But there, there's this... There's this bit in that movie where uh, David Arquette's character tricks a convenience store guy into giving him a free refill on his Slurpee because something about it doesn't smell right, and it doesn't smell right because he stuck his finger in his ass and then held it near the rim. It's like, hey, smell this. Does it smell right to you? It's like, oh, oh, God, what's in there? It's, I don't know. It smells like my ass, doesn't it? I swear to God, they steal the same joke in this movie. Like, Harry and Boyd do the exact same thing when they get to the science conference and try to get a, a refill on their beers and just... That, that blew my fucking mind. Of all the movies you could steal a joke from, why the fuck would you want to steal one from Ready to Rumble? Of all things, just why? Oh my god. I mean, thank, thankfully, most of the comedy in this movie is nowhere near that bad. A lot of it is actually pretty well done, but holy shit. Did, oh, Why? Why would you do that? And that's about all I have to say about Dumb and Dumber 2. It's a pretty straightforward, simple comedy, really. Not a whole lot of detail to go into in this review. Um, as far as whether I would recommend it, I would say yes if you're a fan of the original. Um, I would not recommend paying full price. I'd say stick to a matinee showing or wait for the DVD, give it a rental. But I, I think it is worth seeing if you enjoyed the first movie because I mean, they are still the same characters you know and love and even though it's not as well put together and probably not quite as funny as the first one, there are still a few good laughs in this movie. Um, if you are not a fan of the first movie, you won't like this one either. Don't waste your time. If you haven't seen the first movie, I would actually recommend seeing that first. It's on Netflix right now. If you got a streaming account, check it out on there. Uh, but yeah, it's de I would say see that first, because that'll give you a pretty good idea of whether these are the kind of characters you would enjoy seeing on screen, and then you can decide if you want to see the second one or not. And I guess that's about all I got to say. That's it for Dumb and Dumber 2. Until next time, take care. Whoever this is, we're in the middle of something very important here. This is your dad. What? Hey, guys, I know this is weird timing, but I got to take this. It's my dead dad. She's got me on hold. <laughs>